Okay, we're back with another short video. And this one I want to do a just a quick disassembly, show you the com all the component pieces of the torque box. So I've already started the disassembly just to make it a little quicker. Uh, we are running a uh, fixed yoke. As you may have seen on an earlier video, fixed yoke on the back of our unit. Uh, we've got six uh, long through bolts that bolt our assembly to the adapter. And just left one bolt in here to hold it together. We'll back that up quickly. And we'll start looking at the individual component pieces. Okay, so now we can wiggle the adapter off of the front. This is the adapter plate. There's numerous different uh, adapter plates depending on what we're fitting. Some are square, some are uh, rectangular. Uh, this one is for a Turbo 400. It's a 6061 T6 material. It has two alignment pins. All of our housings have pins. They're all in line and uh, just keeps everything centered and straight. You'll see also six steel inserts. So when we tighten this unit down, we're not tightening, we're not pulling against aluminum threads. When we're torquing these to specs, we're pulling against these steel inserts, very strong. We also have a seal. This is a Viton seal, a very high quality seal. It will go the distance. To hold the unit together, when we're taking this assembly off of a uh, vehicle, maybe we're underneath the vehicle and we, we've taken the six through bolts out, pulled it off of the adapter, which is uh, still bolted to the motor or transmission. Now we've got this unit in our hands. And by the way, this is just sitting on a show uh, stand or platform. This base is not a part of the actual unit, just for show. And uh, so what we wanted to do was keep all this together. We didn't want this falling apart, coming apart, uh, uh, making its way to the workbench, but to stay uh, fully uh, contained. So what we did was simply run a couple of uh, reverse through bolts from the front back. And they come through and all the way back into the tail housing and uh, not much torque. We do have a torque spec so that you don't over tighten, but it's really just to hold the housings together to get you safely over to the workbench. Hopefully a nice clean environment to work on the unit if you need to. So just a couple of reverse uh, through bolts. Now we can actually take the, uh, the housing part. I can just wiggle the tail housing off of its alignment pins. The other thing that's kind of making it a little stiff to pull off is the O-ring. There's a large O-ring. It's a Viton O-ring that's sealing into the next unit inside. So we're not sealing against the flanges. No gaskets whatsoever. There's no gaskets in this unit. Just internal O-rings. About a 20 thousandths compression fit inside the next unit. And that's the way our unit's put together. That's the way our unit's sealed. So, a little bit more about the tail housing now. Also, uh, 6061 T6 aluminum. The billet piece gets whittled into shape. And it has a uh, press fit bearing. This is the output shaft bearing. This is what supports the entire planetary gear system. It's a uh, double deep groove uh, ball bearing. It's pressed into place from this end. It gets pressed in. There is a stop built uh, into the housing here, it can only go so far, and then it's retained with a um, very heavy duty uh, snap ring, uh, hopefully you can see that down in there, big snap ring in there, it takes a uh, heavy duty pair of snap ring pliers to get down in there and get that snap ring in and out. We also have a fill, fill plug in this housing. No alignment pins on this one. The alignment pins are on its mating housing. So that, that is your tail housing, with the exception of a 
rear seal, and this is a Viton double lip uh, seal that is a, a light press into place and then is retained with a spiral lock, lock ring into the final groove. So no matter what, the seal is not coming out. And double lip prevents the dirt and water from getting into the unit, keeps the oil in the unit. One last thing I want to show you on this, the two small holes you see here. This is for oiling. Can you see that? Get the uh, angle right in the light. You have a uh, tapered hole. Now you've got oil on this side. Oil being splashed around on this side. This is not a uh, pressure unit. It's a splash lubrication unit. But we do have oil. And the oil makes its way through those holes and back behind the bearing. We're running a sealed bearing, but back behind the bearing hitting the shaft and coupler area, or shaft and yoke area, being splashed onto the back side of the seal. And that's very important for seal life. Keep the seal temperatures down. We've got to have oil being splashed to the back side of the seal. So that's what those holes are for, and they do an excellent job um, of getting oil onto the back side. Next we'll pull out the uh, planetary gear set. We've seen uh, all about the planetary gear set in, a, in another video, or if you haven't seen that one yet, look for it. Now we're looking into the carrier housing. We see the input shaft, the splined in, it splines into the gear set, and the fixed sun gear, or flanged sun gear, inside the carrier housing. Carrier housing has the two alignment pins on it. It also has the drain plug in the bottom. That's how I've affixed it to this show plate. Let me grab another one here. There you can see the bottom of the unit with the drain plug. It's an O-ringed uh, drain plug. There you can see it from the inside. So now we can take the input uh, housing uh, off. Just kind of wiggle it off of its uh, pins. Tap the input shaft. Okay. So here again you see the large O-ring, the Viton O-ring that seals inside the inner diameter. The two alignment pins to keep everything nice and straight. Now the bearing here is a uh, light press into the housing. And then the coupler has a spiral lock, lock ring on it. We have a Viton seal on the front side of the coupler. And we have a vent in the top. And typically what we do with this is we're running a hose on this, running a hose up higher, usually underneath the hood uh, to a small reservoir. We can invent through that reservoir, or we can even use that for filling the unit. But we do have to pull the fill plug. When we fill the unit, we have to pull that fill plug, or it won't accept fluid. It'll be airlocked. So we're pouring fluid through the vent. It can't vent through the vent. So we've got to pull the plug in the back, and uh, we can put fluid through the top, a measured amount. It holds one quart. If you've got the plug pulled in the back, take it completely out, you're basically wanting to fill to the bottom of those threads. It should be in most vehicles, depending on the angle of the vehicle, the angle of the unit, would be about 30 to 32 ounces of uh, fluid. And we recommend uh, Royal Purple Synthetic ATF or any good synthetic, fully synthetic ATF. You do not want to run a heavy gear oil or even a 1030 uh, type motor oil. It's just too thick for the tight clearances we have in this unit. A thicker fluid is just going to be pumped out. It's going to hydraulic, it's going to pump uh, fluid out through the vent. But with the, the uh, ATF, uh, not a problem. It does not vent. So we can fill through our hose, through our reservoir underneath the hood uh, as a convenience, or we can just go under. If we're underneath the vehicle or have a hoist, easy to get underneath the vehicle, we can just fill through the fill hole until the fluid comes back out. We've got it full, put the plug in. 
don't want to overfill the unit. If you do, it will seek its own level, it will vent fluid, and uh, if you don't have a reservoir, it'll make a mess. So we don't want to put too much oil in it, we just want to make sure that it's full. So we covered the adapter housing, the input housing, the carrier housing, and the tail housing. There's four different housings, so there's four different sub-assemblies. So you can build your sub-assemblies first and then do a final assembly on the unit. Every unit we build then goes to our test bench. We do a spin test. Uh, we run, uh, run the unit for a while. We measure temperatures, uh, listening for sound. We're measuring the amperage draw on the motor that's turning the unit. So it's a lot of quality control uh, goes into the uh, unit before it gets packaged for shipping. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, check out our website at torquetrends.com.